It's really hard to believe that August is already here, and frankly, this year has just gone entirely too fast. I don't know about you guys, but the, the time is just completely flying by. In another month, I've been doing this channel for an entire year, and that's just mind-blowing. Every month, I go through and showcase five spectacular Linux apps that I think you should definitely check out. And this month is no different, so let's go ahead and jump into the top five apps of the month for August 2021. But before we do, if you'd like to submit an app for this list, you can do so in the comments below. Just give me the name of the app and the developer if you know them. Don't leave a link because Google will delete those things. So just give me the app name and I can probably do some Googling and find what you're talking about. So now let's go ahead and jump in. So the first one on the list is called Sayonara Player. Now this was asked for by someone by the name of Krishna Das. I'm probably butching your name, so I apologize for that. So... Uh, Krishna asked for a application to manage a large media library, and Sayonara Player is one of them that I found. Now, I'm not going to guarantee that this is the best option out there. I think that Rhythmbox is also very good for this and probably works a little bit better. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. But let's talk about what Sayonara is to begin with. It's basically just a music player, and it allows you to go through and manage your music library in the same ways you would expect an app like this to do. You can go through and have multiple libraries if you like. So let's say you do a good job of actually maintaining your library and have genres and stuff in different directories. You could go through and create different libraries like that. Uh, you can go through and edit tags. You can edit album art and all that kind of stuff right here within the app. And it's really great. And it kind of gives you the iTunes-ish vibes because it's very a very busy interface, kind of like iTunes at least used to be. And it's really quite nice. Now, it does have some plugins that are available. I haven't actually played around with them too much, but you can go through and find things like podcasts and streams and play with an equalizer and so uh, things like that. The one thing I will say is that it's not the fastest application out there. I did notice as it loads album art from the internet, it actually kind of freezes, so that's not great. But I will say that of all the the music players that I've ever used, this one imported my library the fastest. Now, I don't know whether that's because I have my music library on the SSD in my computer, or if it's just natively fast, I don't know. But it was very quick. It took less than a minute to actually import the entire library. So that was really cool. So that is Sayonara Player. The next one on the list is called Conversine. Now, weird name aside... Basically, what this app does is allows you to batch edit photos. So you can go through and convert them to different types of photos. You can go through and change the dimensions of all, uh, several different photos at the same time. You can go through and change the resolution and s do scaling and all that kind of stuff. You can also change the output of several different files or images at the same time. It's really quite powerful. It works really well. So I'm going to actually go ahead and show you how this works. So I have three files here, and I just dragged and dropped them into Conversing here. And then what I can do is just go through and select these, all three of these, and I can scale them to a different percentage if I wanted to. I can go down here and change the resolution to something different, and this basically adds to the X and Y, I believe. And then I could go through and change where they're saved as well and rename them if I wanted to. So... Uh, it, you could add like a prefix or a suffix and a, or a progressive number if you wanted to. Uh, to Say you had like 100 files and they were all dates or whatever. You could go through and name them screenshot and then have a progressive number at the end of the name. So that's really cool, right? And you can actually go through and like I said, you can convert these to something different if you wanted to as well. So that is conversing. It's really quite neat and it's really actually quite fast. So... I just did three files here and actually didn't change anything, truly change anything. But if you have like hundreds of files, it actually does go through and do them really, really fast. You can also go through and change the files that have a whole, say your files have your, excuse me, let's say your images have uh, transparent backgrounds. You could go through and replace the transparent backgrounds with colors. You can also change the format to different formats down here as well, like I said. So that is Conversine. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not. 
Okay, the next one is called DMIX GUI. Now, I can't really test this because I don't have a Deezer account, but if you use Deezer as your streaming music platform of choice, so this is something like Spotify, but it's, you know, obviously a different service, and you want a native application for Linux, DMIX GUI is an option. Now, this was submitted by Brandon Sanchez in the comments of last month's video, so if you have an application you'd like to submit, you can do so in the comments of this video, and I may use that in, in next months or the months after that. Like I said, I can't actually go through and test this all that much, and I even if I could, I couldn't go through and actually play anything on stream without getting demonetized, but from what I see, there's a lot of stuff here that you can actually do. You can obviously log into uh, Deezer, and that will allow you to sync your playlists and such. You can download things, uh, songs and albums and stuff directly to your computer for offline play. Uh, it looks like you can actually change the color of this thing as well, which is, you know, kind of cool. And as you can see, this is very, very responsive. So, uh, and actually, it looks like you can pretty much change to a custom color, too, if you want. I don't, maybe that's not what that means. Um, but anyways, that is really, really cool. And I, like I said, I don't use Deezer. I've been kind of transitioning into using my own music. But uh, if you use Deezer, DMX GUI is a what looks like a very cool application for being able to use Deezer natively on your Linux desktop. Thank you, Brandon, for submitting that. The next one on the list is called Clapper. Now, Clapper is a GTK-based minimal video player, and it works really, really well, and it's really, really quite minimal. There's not a lot you can do here. If you're looking for all the features that VLC has, you're going to be disappointed. This is just a video player. But it does do some cool things. So it goes through and will actually obviously play local video files if you want. But you can also play YouTube videos similar to what I'm doing here. I took the URL of last month's video for Apps of the Month, inputted it into this program here using this up here, just open URL, and then it started playing it. And there's several preferences, obviously, but there's not a ton of stuff that you can do here. It's meant to be very simple and just be a very good, very minimal music player. And that's really all Clapper is meant to do. One of the cool things that it does is that if you are playing a video that has black bars in it, so this one kind of does, you can actually go through and get rid of those black bars by pressing this button here, and it will actually zoom in so those black bars go away. So if you, you don't want to watch black bars, so it's kind of similar like to what happens if you're on a phone that has a weird aspect ratio when you zoom in on a video, it will kind of get rid of those black bars. That does that similar in this video, in this application as well. Obviously, you can also go full screen as well. Another cool thing that I noticed is that if you're in full screen, it'll actually tell you when your video is meant to end, the actual time up here at the top. That's really, really cool. So that is Clapper. The final one on the list for this month is called Notes. Now, Notes is a very simple, very minimal note-taking application. And the reason why I'm featuring it on the list is because it's very well designed. Now, it doesn't really fit very well in a tiling window manager. It's really kind of meant for a floating window manager, but it's not atrocious in a tiling window manager either. It is full featured, so it will allow you to go through and create notes and stuff like that. It's not as full featured as something like Evernote or whatever. It's meant for just simple note taking. So you just go through and you can type your note here. Your note here. And then if you use notes on another platform, so say for instance you have to use a Mac or a Windows machine, you can actually sync between notes instances. Now there are no mobile applications yet, which is a little disappointing. If notes had a mobile version, I'd be buying into this really hard because I really, truly like it a lot. Uh, but they don't have a mobile application, so that's disappointing. But if you do need synchronizing between Windows, Mac, and Linux, Notes is a great option. Now, there aren't a ton of options here, at least as far as I can tell. I don't know whether or not, because I'm in a tiling window manager, if I'm missing the options panel. Like, maybe there's supposed to be like a global menu here somewhere. I don't know. But as far as I can tell... All that's here is the delete button and the search button and add new. That's literally all there is. 
Uh, like I said, it's possible that because I'm in a tiling window manager, there's something missing in terms of a menu system. But other than that, I mean, the reason why I say I think there's something missing is because it does have syncing capabilities. So somewhere there's a menu system. I just don't know where it's at. Uh, maybe I'm missing it somewhere. I don't know. Hi there, Matt from the future. I'm right in the middle of talking about Note, the Notes application that I'm showcasing for this month's video. And there are a few things that I forgot about and one thing that I need to explain. As I'm about to say, it's possible that the reason why there's not a menu system in my version of Notes is because it's a snap. I don't know whether or not that's true. You'll hear about that here in a second. But according to the documentation, there is a menu system within Notes. It's a three dot system next to the delete button. For whatever reason, my version of the, the application doesn't have it. I don't know why. Uh, it's really weird. And I'm assuming, like I said before, it has something to do with the fact that I'm in a tiling window manager. Either that or it's a snap problem. I have a tendency to always blame snaps. So, uh, you know, whatever. The other thing that I forgot to mention while I was talking about notes is that this application supports markdown. So if you're a markdown person, you'll be able to use markdown directly in this and it will translate to mark to markdown in real time. So that's definitely something that's really cool if you're interested. If only the damn thing had a mobile application, I'd really like it even more. Back to past Matt and the rest of the video. It's also possible that this is an old version because I had to install it via the Snap Store. I could not get this to work through the version that's in the AUR. So that could be playing around with something as well. So just keep that in mind. If you choose to use this, your mileage may vary on the syncing functionality. Uh, hopefully it's just a thing that's going on with my machine. So that is the list for this month. Again, if you have an application you'd like to see featured next month or the month after that, leave the app name in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All that kind of stuff. I really, truly do appreciate all the support the channel is getting. We're getting very, very close to 4,000 subscribers. I would love to see that by the end of August. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really, again, I really, truly do appreciate everyone who has subscribed and commented and liked my videos over the last year. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons, Devon Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus Maglin, Donnie Sven, Jackson Knife and Tool, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Arts Center, American Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.